This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, hello, everyone, and good publishing day to you. We're having a little bit of a variable today, not how to market your books or how to publish your books, um, but it's really about the visual side of things, how to bring imagery that rocks the socks of anyone who looks at it. So think about your blogs, think about a newsletter, think about articles, and, you know, who knows, sometimes it turns up an author photo shows in here. But we're really going to be directing a show to all the things that are so important in this highly visual world. With us today is Andrew Darlow. He is based on the East Coast, New Jersey-based photographer. He's a writer, he's a speaker, and he's a consultant. Over the past two decades, he's taught thousands of amateur and professional photographers how to improve their photography, workflow, digital print output for conferences, um, industry events, and so much more. His articles and images have been included in publications, websites, books, and TV programs, including Animal Planet, People Magazine, and U.S. Magazine Online. He's the editor of the photography website imagingbuffett.com, and he himself is the author of four award-winning books, including one of my favorites, Biscuit for Your Thoughts, a hardcover, small coffee table book featuring his photographs of dogs paired with canine-inspired philosophical sayings and Focus and Filter, which features over 50 tips and techniques drawn from his long career as a potential, I can't speak this morning, professional photographer. Welcome, Andrew, to author you your guide to book publishing. Well, thank you, Judith. Thank you for that kind introduction, and it's really an honor to be here. Well, you know, I was really thinking, Andrew, you know, as I, because I was um, uh, creating blogs for next week. I try to get them up a week ahead of time, so to speak. And I was going through them and then thinking of all the different repurposing. And then I'm going up capturing and I'll use different types of images. But the reality is that almost anything that people put out on social media should have an image attached to it. So why not your own photos? What do you think? Oh, absolutely. I think those are the ones, at least in my experience, that get the most traction, the most likes, the most comments. Anyone can find free or inexpensive stock photos or put up uh, those little word pictures that you see all the time. But if you actually show something from either of yourself or your family or somewhere where you're enjoying your life, it makes a totally different impact. So I, I totally agree. So, so this is about photography today. So how you can make slick, click, and tick and type photos that you can enhance just about anything that you are doing. So uh, Andrew and I have, uh, he was at the extravaganza uh, last year, and we actually have a, a, a conference call every Friday morning that we do with a group of us. And we're always sharing tips. And Andrew is really someone who really can dig in and find things uh, incredibly fast. So our, our overall theme is really how to take better pictures of people and critters, or uh, basically I, it's almost anything, isn't it, Andrew? Yes, absolutely. I think that my goal today is to help anyone with any camera uh, either take more pictures than they did before, which means they'll probably get better pictures, or find a couple of tools that I'm going to mention that will totally change the quality of their pictures. All right. So for everyone, this is what we're going to be doing is whether you want to take your own author photos for book jackets, anything for social media, if you want to make really captivating photos of kiddos or pets 
um, items for kids' books. This is what the show is about. So stay tuned. We're going to be dedicating the entire hour to it. So let's kind of start off with cameras, um, uh, Andrew. I know that um, my husband still has some of the, some oldies out there. I'm not even sure if we know how they all work. If I if I can find a button, I can work it. It's finding the film that goes with those. So yeah. yeah. So what do we do with some of the oldies? Do we just change them all in? Um, and I guess maybe we should also look at some of the cost factors that people should be looking at too. Sure. Well, as far as the older cameras, it depends. If they're film-based, I would say for the vast majority of people, either donate them or if you want to play, you can almost always find the film for them. But it's not what you're going to be using on a daily basis. So, uh, But we can learn a lot from them. And what, from that whole world of analog film cameras came digital cameras and digital SLRs. And with that... I'm going to mention some of the things that you should be looking for that you can learn from the old cameras that you can use with your mobile phones. And I should probably start with mobile phones because yes, yeah. it's crazy how uh, prevalent they are and how good they've become. It's scary, <laughs> to, especially to photo professional photographers, how good uh, cell phone uh, smartphones are. So I would say let's go in that direction. So probably the vast majority of your audience is going to be, uh, they'll have a smartphone. If not in their hand right now, it'll be in their pocket or handbag. You're absolutely, that's absolutely correct. I, I don't know anyone who doesn't walk around with one in their pocket. In fact, you know, one of my rules is I've got to have a pocket on me <laughs> that I can, <laughs> and, and, and my kids went in the sweat, a sweater, an Irish sweater they gave me for Christmas. Um, actually my other daughter, this is from the two girls, they, my other daughter uh, knitted in pockets with the same kind of yarn or certainly close to the color. So I would have it big enough that I could slip in my smartphone. Okay. <laughs> so. yeah, that's good. Well, if, if you were looking for one, if you didn't have one already, I would highly recommend you find one that has either two or three lenses, believe it or not, some digital cameras, a smartphone cameras now have three lenses so that means that that you can zoom in and have multiple focal lengths so you can go wide to medium and sometimes even almost telephoto and, and essentially zoom in just by pressing a button without losing any quality so that's the first big tip wow so and you so can you tell us some names um sorry, can you repeat that last one yeah which so which which cameras um, is it Apple? Who, who are the players okay. here? Yes. So like the almost all of the higher end Apple smartphones now have two uh, cameras. So I say two lenses, but it's, it's two cameras actually inside. But the most important thing to, to look at is the focal length of those cameras. So most cameras, if they have two, usually they have a wide angle, which would be equivalent to like uh, in the old school 35 millimeter terms mm -hmm. it would be like 24 millimeters which is very wide and then the second lens or camera inside the smartphone would be about 50 millimeter and the reason why that's important is because when you set your smartphone to use the 50 millimeter or the one that zooms in more people's faces look more natural like like they would in in a magazine and not so much like they would in a cartoon so that's the big thing. That is the big thing. Wow. And and how much more would someone pay for a mobile phone that had the the dual? I, I'm I'm just gonna call it. I'm, I wrote down dual camera. Yeah. How, how much would they be paying more for that, or is it just kind of automatic with it? You have to do your research, but in almost all cases, the Android phones, like from Samsung, mm -hmm. will generally be less because of you know for whatever reason. So I would just look and whether you go to T-Mobile or Verizon, just look at all the specials they have. And sometimes you buy one, you get one free. So just, just look carefully and you can't miss it. Like if you look at the camera uh, on the back of the, the phone, you'll see two lenses there. So you'll know. So it is, is it easy to switch back and forth between them? Yes, it's a single button. And uh, generally they keep it right in the middle of the frame so that you hit oh. it once and it, it switches. In Apple's, the 
vernacular. It's 1x and 2x. And, uh, but, but everyone who has ever zoomed into a picture, you'll see the big difference from when you go from using the actual separate lens versus just pinching and trying to zoom into something. Uh, so this is now evolved to, I'm just picking this up. You're, this is now evolved for getting the latest and greatest lens for your older cameras, which a lot of people have, as you know. Um, that you want to, you're going to get a mobile phone with just at least the two camera capability to get this broader choice. Absolutely, and if you if you think of the stereotypical film camera with the stereotypical tourist with it around their neck from the mm -hmm. 1970s to the 1990s, even that mm -hmm. almost always came with a 50 mil, millimeter lens, just so that you know it's about equal to what was on those uh, those cameras. Got it. All right. And and then and then what typically what do most lenses the current camera without the uh, this additional option what kind of what kind of width does that have? Well, I mean, if you don't have if you just have a single a single yeah. uh -huh. lens. Uh -huh. it's, well, it just depends. But generally, they are less expensive, and sometimes well, and yeah, it's it just you have to look because you'd be surprised. You can often get a two lens camera on the Android system. And for the same as what would be a one lens camera from an Apple phone. But it's really complicated these days because they've created so many different uh, smartphones. Well, that's that's for sure. All right. So we've got about 30 seconds here. I just one more question and we're going to go to our first break. But if, if I if I have a regular, let's say I have an Apple six plus um, and I didn't bump it up because I don't take a gazillion pictures, but I sure like this idea of the dual idea. I mean, that's that's kind of appeasing to me. So that'll be interesting. So Andrew, when we come back from our break, um, I just want to come back and kiss that the normal camera, just the one camera film. You're, you're talking about it was the, the digital had 50, was it? 50 millimeter. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author You Extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, Members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author Use, the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author You is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author You, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author You today at authoru.org. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books 
and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and easing at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Hello, oh, welcome back. We're with Andrew Darlow. He is a uh, photographer now and has you know, spoken at and delivered workshops with the International Center of Photography in New York and um, the PDN Photo Plus Expo in, uh, at Columbia University. So he's, he's really brought in as the photographer's photographer. So what he's doing is going over some of the tips. We have been kissing and tap dancing with mobile phones because that's what um, all of you, I'm not going to say some of you, all y'all have them, um, mobile phones, and some are smarter than others. So what Andrew was telling us about is that some have, both both types, um, one camera at least, some have two, and maybe there's eventually going to be more. So one of the things, though, Andrew, I need to ask you, if if you're a really serious, serious photographer or, or want to be um what are the other options what should they be doing something else sure yes and i think a lot of people probably have what's called a point and shoot camera because that's what the vast majority of people use these were digital cameras uh, before the the smartphone quality really really rose up they were using point and shoot so but many of these mini pocketable cameras take truly incredible photos and video and i'll just throw out one name and that's the sony rx 100 series these are very small but very powerful options that people have if you want to take it to the next level if you want some extra features uh etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's that's one option mm-hmm. there's others like right. digital S- digital slrs are very very popular and uh, if you've ever heard of the Canon Rebel series, I think they've sold millions of them. And those are outstanding, uh, both for photos and for video. And then there's something called mirrorless, and specifically mirrorless interchangeable cameras. And those are the ones I primarily use these days. This is uh, for when you want to be able to change lenses, but also you want the advantage of when you look through the viewfinder, you see exactly what you're going to get, much like when you are looking uh, on the LCD screen when you're taking a picture. And if you wanted to just do a search for one particular brand, the Sony A7 series would be one example. So you have those three main categories of cameras, and the big advantage to having a more advanced camera, whether it's a small one or like the digital SLR or the mirrorless interchangeable ones, is you can purchase a zoom lens, like for example, like a 24 to 200, which gives you so much flexibility. You can be photographing landscapes on the beach or in the mountains, and then you can quickly zoom within like a second and be photographing up close on, let's say an elk or a deer or a person's face. So that's the the advantage of having those bigger cameras. Well, that is huge. Okay. so. 
Some of you who are listening right now may start getting that glaze in the eyes. Your lens are not so focused with several things that he's thrown off. Guess what? Andrew has made a special page on his website that you can go to and get all these tips he's recommending. So let me just give it to you. We'll give it a couple of times as we go along. And it's you, his website is Focus and Filter. And you spell out A-N-D. Focusandfilter.com forward slash author. Right. And then you can get all these little, little tips that we're going to roll through here. All right. So let's let's um, move on. Um, how do you, I'm curious that you've already thrown a bunch of options at us. How do we decide which camera is the right one for me? Okay. Well, the first uh -huh. thing is decide what your end use is. If you're taking pictures of yourself for Instagram and Facebook, it's often best, especially if you have a good quality smartphone, just to start with that. And so for the vast majority of people, that's going to do a great a great job. Otherwise, if you're exploring the world and want a lot more flexibility, if you're going to Tanzania or other places in Africa, Ooh. photographing wildlife, <laughs> or to Alaska, which I know you were recently, and you're on a boat and you want to photograph glaciers, then I would say move up to one of the other options that I, that I talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, actually, I have to say the glaciers were amazing. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure. Well, that was that was the first trip last year, Andrew. Did I was back in the fall, in uh, and uh, Alaska, and I have been there before. A fall happens very fast. You know, it's not a uh, like in the lower states. It's not a long, and you're back on the east coast. I'm in Colorado. It's it's not this long over sometimes a couple of months as it goes through this transition. Mm -mm, Alaska does it in a couple of days. <laughs> it's exactly. done. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people choose the camera based on where they're going, and uh, because they they know they may not ever get back there. So it's really uh, that's a big thought. But uh, for most people, especially for portraits, you're going to do fine with your smartphone. Okay, so for so for all you selfies, probably what you've got is good enough. That's what I'm hearing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Then. Then. So let's say. Um, so it's, it, what about, but this is, portraits are different, are they not, Andrew? Well, portraits are, since they are so valued by both families and also online, as far as the honesty that generally comes through, of course, you can make a portrait not look so honest through retouching, but let's not talk about that. People really do connect with portraits, and I have a lot of tips regarding portraits that people can use right away to improve. Well, let's go through them. So the first one that I always talk about is window lighting. If you've ever looked at some of the master painters' work, especially Vermeer, uh -huh. they truly understood the beauty of window lighting. I don't know that they had that much other lighting to work with. And Probably not. It was, <laughs> well, maybe a candle. <laughs> candle, which they've also done beauty, beautiful things with. But you cannot go wrong with window lighting. You set someone up next to a window. Hopefully there's not direct sunlight, but through most of the day, the light that comes through most windows is absolutely magnificent. So you set them up uh, so that they're on the side slightly facing toward the window, and then you photograph them. And it's often just magical, and it's something that a lot of people don't think about. Uh, pets are especially good for this because a lot of them love to be next to a window. So it's just it's like a natural thing. So that would be my first tip. Mm -hmm. uh, study some window lighting and consider using window lighting. Uh, even for selfies, you could do this. The problem with selfies is if you are going to do selfies, I would either get a tripod for your camera and, and a wireless, uh, like a Bluetooth remote, or get a selfie stick that allows the camera, uh, the smartphone, to go fur far enough away from you so you don't look like a cartoon character. That's, uh, that's my so, uh, What do you think of selfie sticks? I think they're fantastic. I mean, they do what they need to do. Just don't hurt anyone. <laughs> don't don't let it fall off of a cliff, or you know, over a railing. You just have to be careful with them. You know, I actually had a friend that did that. Oh. So, yeah, he was backing up, and uh oh, um, so and serious injury. So, uh, word to the wise, all of you here, be be very careful on that. Yes. Okay, so we want to get a tripod. We want to do lightning. I'm going to give everyone homework. I think you ought to. 
to, you know, within the next two weeks, get down to a museum and it, wander into where some of the old masters are, where, whatever they've got in their master's collection. And you'll see exactly what Andrew's talking about. There is just a whole different feel about them uh, when you see the kind of lighting that they use and expose. Absolutely. There's an, a related tip where you can sort of create the look of a window, window lighting mm. by purchasing an inexpensive product. It's, uh, I'll give you the official name. It sounds complicated, but if you search for collapsible circular photo reflector, you will see this product. They usually come in, they're called a five in one or six in one, but the whole idea behind it, it's a, usually round and inside is a translucent disc. And you can get them from six inch diameter to about 60 inch diameter. And all you have to do is have someone hold it, or you could find a way to use a light stand and and you know, hold it up, but you put it between the sun and your subject and magic happens because you turn harsh daylight into mm -hmm. beautiful diffused light. So you, if you have a pal and you're taking pictures or something, that person can take this collapsible circular um, photo reflector. Did I get it right? You got it. Oh, I'm so excited when I can remember <laughs> these things. That you take that and they would hold it above you or between yes. the sun yeah. and you and magic happens. Yes, between the sun and you, generally the sun is going to be, for most of the day in most places, the sun is pretty high in the sky. So it's generally mm -hmm. not very flattering. But when you use this, you, you turn the sun into a very diffuse light that is just just so so beautiful and when you see it you, you, yeah. you can't imagine that you were able to do that so quickly well that's cool i'm going to get one of those things and 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 you know there be out real literally i'm going to go on and order one right away great they're very inexpensive also which is nice they're probably in the range of 15 dollars to 30 dollars oh perfect and, and also everyone it'll make your face softer which i think is very cool all right with this this is andrew darlow we're talking about how to rock rock with photography. You're listening to Author You, your guide to book publishing, all about your success as an author and a book creator. We'll be right back. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged event. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one -on -one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the Events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. 
Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right. So Andrew, as we segue to the break, was we were talking about his, he was calling it the classical circular photo reflector. So I went shopping um, and I have bought, now I, you know, when I'm online, I'm going to jump onto Amazon. But it was called, uh, the product creator was Newer, N-E-E-W-E-R, and it's a 43-inch, and it's a 5-in-1 collapsible multi-disc light reflector. Oh, my God, it's got a bag with it, too, all right? <laughs> so, so we get translucent, we get silver, gold, white, and black. So you get five of these babies, and it was less than $20, all right? So there's a tip. There's a tip for all of you. That's Good. fantastic. And, you know, one of the things you can use the white one for, because mm. I had talked about the translucent one for when the sun goes through, but mm. the white one is great. If you are doing window uh, photography, window light photography, you can put it on a stand or maybe even a chair, and you can put the white side, which actually will push the light back and reflect the light back from the light that's coming from the window in case it's a little bit too contrasty. So now you have the ability to use it for multiple things. Oh, so this sounds like a play thing. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, so you take, you need to play and take pictures, but there you go under $20 that will totally morph. Um, Cause Andrew says it's magic. Uh, what, what you can do here um, with that. So I love those kind of tips. All right, Andrew, I'm ready to throw it back to you. What other goodies that we can do uh, dealing with portraits and, or selfies and that kind of area? Okay, well, let me stay on the subject of lighting because it's so important. Okay, it is. And one of my favorite other tips is if you're inside and you want to create light anytime, anywhere, you can just go to Home Depot or Ikea or just go online and find some fixtures that have, that have multi-bulbs, meaning you can put multiple bulbs in them. And some of these amazing fixtures actually have these, like, octopus like yes um, movable silver uh -huh. uh, legs on them or arms yeah. and then you can point them directly at whatever whatever subject you want so if you want a little light on your head you can put a little light toward your head and if you want a little on your feet you can put a little on your feet and those are outstanding and those would best be used with led bulbs and to get started the most common ones are called soft white and about 60 watt equivalent would be my suggestion. You can find them anywhere. Well, you know, I love this tip, Andrew, because when you, you think of those multi things, I mean, some of them will look really junky, but, you know, I, and I can remember them. They, you know, you get them and they've got like four, like three to five arms going different ways. The octopus is the great way to describe them. But this idea of doing them, even for like if you're doing a video, but you can just sit it, you know, get it and sit it on a table. If you're working off a table, say like you know you've seen you know you, you see me sometimes out in my conference room 
that I've got all these bookshelves behind me, which I kind of like. But that would be the great offset to bring the light in. And then with my new handy dandy, maybe circular photo thing, I can play around um, and, and, and really get in a good shot. One of the questions I asked Andrew off, uh, offline, and he's going to kiss it here, but I had been told by many people, just get some pink bulbs. It really does. It makes your skin look so much better. Can you, can you address that, Andrew? Right. I don't, I don't recommend that. I would say just use the soft white bulbs. There's a number of reasons. Number one, you can use them all day, every day. They're very pleasing. Plus, you'll save a lot of energy compared to like the old-fashioned incandescent bulbs. Plus, it's unnecessary to photograph with pink bulbs because our cameras have the ability to white balance. And if, especially if you use a smartphone, the pink bulb light will probably end up being corrected by your camera because it doesn't really want you to have a pink pinkish glow. So uh -huh. if you if you control it with a more advanced camera, then you can make it work, but it's just as easy to change inside of the camera something called white balance. And you can just use the LED bulbs which are soft white, which already are slightly warm compared to daylight that you would find outside. And uh, just go from there. But I'll add one thing. If you do want to use window light, which is daylight, and you want that to match, let's say on the other side with some bulbs, then when you go to purchase your bulbs, find the LED bulbs that are close to uh, 4,000 Kelvin or daylight, because then you'll balance the light from either side. It's all about balancing light. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have another question about our, our octopus light, because, because I'm shopping again. And as <laughs> we so go on, that is it. Would it be better to have like a floor light is your octopus light, which I see them usually, or a table light? If, I would if, say, yeah, floor, floor light is almost always better because you'll want to take some pictures when you're standing, some sitting. And it's and all the ones that I've seen, it's generally more flexible to use the floor, floor one. Okay, so I love that tip, everyone. I think that's a great idea, and it will. Um, this is a really inexpensive way to solve a lot of the lighting problems I think most of us have. Um, so thank you, thank you for that. Andrew. Oh, you're welcome. And don't forget, you now have a translucent, collapsible, circular <laughs> reflector that you can put right in front of, uh, let's say, four or five of those bulbs, and it will just be magnificent when you see what <laughs> comes out of it. Oh my God, I'm ready for a magnificent photo. I mean, this, this is so much fun though, when you can do this kind of stuff and you learn these little tips. And, you know, remember I bought my, those little discs for under 20 bucks. Um, and, and then I bet you, if you hunt around or if you even do some garage sale, you'll find some of these multi table things because a lot of them are not beautiful that people get rid of, but for, for doing I, making your own like little personal studio to do photos and even set up and because Andrew and I are a big believer that you need to start thinking about videos also is that this I think this is this solves a huge problem Andrew so I think it's terrific oh great all right let's talk about backgrounds um okay what kind of backgrounds are best and and you know what I also want you to kiss on what do you avoid like the plague okay <laughs> let me let me start with what's great uh, if you are an author and you have a really nice set of books behind you, like you see whenever lawyers are being interviewed, they have those law books all really nicely organized. I say for an author, books are fantastic. It's not easy to pull off. I mean, Judith, you do it because I see you on video all the time. But that's one that I would say you really can't go wrong with a really nice set of, of books behind you. That's number one. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, if you don't have that and you want to keep it simple, I would recommend you either look for a wall that's in your home, maybe that has a piece of art on it that you can use, that it, once you frame it, it looks really nice. If that's not possible, I highly recommend you go shopping for wallpaper because Ooh. there are so many amazing wallpapers on sale, and you can often find them at thrift stores or just anywhere. And then you can either attach it to the wall, let's say with some blue tape that you would use normally for, for painting, or some of these products actually you're able to peel and stick them to a wall. So there are a lot of different options. 
And so I would say that's one of my favorite things to, uh, to use. And then the other good example of, of a background would be something that is like a picture. Let's say you, you can get them online. It's like a picture of uh, trees or mountains. It, it puts people into a very nice, serene mood. So that's the, the third one I would recommend. Well, I know that when you, I mean, I've been on set a lot of times on TV. And I mean, some of them have set sets, so they're, you know, staged a little bit. But when I've been on news shows, you know, they, they have the the green background and then they drop in different different spots on that. Um, that sometimes, though, Andrew, I have to say, I begin to feel like they're they're almost convoluted. So much of them. And I, I like the idea. Of course, you know, I'm if I have one addiction, it's called books. So I have bookshelves everywhere, which ties in with I mean, I don't I couldn't even count how many bookshelves we have with different things on them. Um, so that's a natural for me. Um, but also, you know, I'm just going to say to all of you, maybe doing the neutral. I love this wallpaper because I do like some of those, some wallpapers are just gorgeous. Mm-hmm. That you can go and um, you can do maybe some staging and maybe a little platform. But if you've got your own as an author, whether you have one or two books, you could make a stack of books. You you know you, maybe you have a lot like I do, but you could do a stack of books and do a little staging. So behind you um, is kind of a little commercial going on. I kind of like that idea. Absolutely. And if you're outside, I have a couple things that you All can right. think about. All right. So now. A lot of people have a lot of trees uh, all over in their area. So trees just make a perfect background in so many ways. They're often just there, and you have a, lo- a long row of them. So look for areas of trees or thick bushes. Uh, try not to include moving cars and a lot of you know, pedestrians if, if it's not something that fits in with your brand. Uh, and if you have like a health-related theme or a fitness theme, I think a beach is perfect or like a running track. A lot of parks have these running tracks and then they have these areas you can stop and do pull-ups or things like that. So think about those areas for background. All right. So we have our, we've got about 25 seconds for our next, our final break, Andrew. Can you believe it? So we're going to have to really haul here. Um, any last minute tip that, you know, a couple of seconds and then we'll jump out and come back in. Absolutely. If you're going to put a backdrop up, I would say definitely if you're using a a light stand, consider using sandbags. I have a free PDF and I'll include it on that special page. Perfect. Because that way it's much safer. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. 
We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. This is Andrew Darlow. We are talking about photography. And I love the stream of tips that we have been going through. And again, they're going to be on Andrew's website. Um, and they're also in far, far more detail in his excellent award-winning book, Focus and uh, Filter. Um, and his last name is spelled D-A-R-L-O-W. And he has created a very special page for all of you. Just go to focusandfilter.com forward slash author. And you get all these tips we've been talking about, plus a little bit more as we go through. It's so very cool. And the other thing is, Andrew and I were talking it, it's a, we both refer to the multi-light uh, uh, lamp to use for your lighting um, as the octopus. It's really known in the trade as the Medusa, you know, like the, the, the mythology with all the hair all over the place and snakes. But anyway, these are lights. All right, Andrew. Um, one other thing I wanted to kiss on before we talk about taking uh, photos with lots of people in it, whether it's family, friends, or or, or whatever, um, that what about makeup? Because it, you know, I did a lot of television. I've done a lot of TV, and if you don't have makeup on TV, you look like you are pocked to death. It looks horrible on it. Um, so can mm-hmm. you just, as a photographer, maybe there's a lot of big difference uh, from a TV camera versus the kind of photography you're talking about. Okay, sure. I'll I'll cover a little bit on makeup and hair since they tend to go together. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And I'm not I'm not an authority on makeup, but I've photographed many models over the years and worked with a number of makeup artists. And the one thing that I could recommend everyone do, especially if you're working with a professional, you should request to have matte makeup. Generally, because it helps avoid shine. And the one thing that's a real headache to retouch is shine on the forehead and on the cheeks. I'm sure we've all seen it. And obviously it has something to do also depending on the humidity and the heat in the room. But for the most part, if you use matte makeup, it's going to be much better. So that's makeup. And then regarding hair, the most important thing in my opinion is to check your hair just before you're going to take pictures, either by Uh, taking a selfie with your camera or you can use your computer's webcam because it's amazing how different our hair can look between when we look in the mirror and when we look at it in a photograph. I don't know what it is, but I think it's because we're reversed. Well, it may also be, you know, while you're saying this, I'm going to add on one other thing. Like my, I I wear glasses. It's a vision. I don't need them for reading in, but I always make sure that they're non-glare. Um, the air or glare resistance, whatever they, you know, they call them where you get your glasses if you wear them. Because that I was actually watching something early this morning on the news and their guest did not have on non glare glasses and the lights were shining back and all that. And, and I, and I sure he didn't know any different. Um, and no one ever said anything about it, but I'm just going to tell you, if you're going to have photos taken for your, of yourself, or your plan be on TV, get some non-glare glasses if you need them, just an FYI. That is a fantastic tip. And 
probably because I don't wear glasses generally, I, I didn't bring it up. But the one thing about that also is if you don't have non-glare glasses or if your subject that you're photographing does not have non-glare lenses, they can often get away by tipping their head, like their, their chin down a little bit. And by the way, one of the best tips for making people look uh, a little better in general is just to, to lower your chin a little bit so it almost has a double double positive effect. Uh -huh. So, I mean, but what about a double chin? <laughs> well, you know, everyone's face is different. But the way to counteract that is to uh, push your head out a little bit from your neck and then move your chin down without looking like... Oh, know, yes. Like oh, yeah, the turtle, the turtle movement. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give another wild tip, and then we have to jump on. Here's what we girls discovered. If we're all together, this is a group. This ties into our next little module here, the, the group together. If you have all your friends, if you just take your hand behind each one's neck and just pull it a little bit, it's like having a little mini facelift. It's so <laughs> That is so funny. I've never heard of that. Oh, 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 that's my tip then. Okay. All right. So let's talk about taking pictures with multiples, um, multiple people in them. Sure. Well, when you have multiple people, first of all, things change a little bit with regarding to the, the focal length when I was talking about different lenses. So generally, depending on how many people you have, you may be able to use the wider lens. But in general, you still don't want to get too close, even with multiple people. So consider using, if you have the two lenses, use the, use the one that's more telephoto or the one that zooms in more, and people will look better. So that's that's one thing. The other thing is, this is like a super tip that anyone can use, especially if you're photographing someone else or multiple people, especially for multiple people. And that is using the magic one, two, three, cheese. And I don't know what it is. Some kind mm -hmm. of spirit in the universe comes down and makes a, a perfect smile on everyone's face when you do what? that. When they say cheese or cheese, what did you say? Cheese, cheese like the food. <laughs> so you do. I thought cheese was more fun. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, cheese. And I don't know, because we're conditioned, uh, at least as Americans, in, in other countries they use other words. But there's mm -hmm. something that happens when you do that. And also take more than uh, three pictures. If it's important, take like 10, because what invariably may happen is you'll have nine out of 10 people which are, who are absolutely, absolutely perfect. And then the one person, for whatever reason, is perfect in one picture, but not the other eight or nine. Yep. And then yep. you can easily have them, in, you know, have the faces uh, copied and pasted from one into the other. Yeah, and, and also, especially if you have kiddos in the picture. Oh, yes, and pets, too, because that's another little tip. If someone is holding a pet, often the mm, they want to look at the pet to make sure that they are looking to the camera. When they do, that doesn't look good for the camera. So what I say is, don't worry about Fifi. Uh, I, I got Fifi, don't worry, I, and then I talk to Fifi, and basically all the pictures look great because they're looking at me, and then I'm looking at Fifi, and I can get the picture of the dog or the cat, and that works. And if I have to, again, I'll, I'll copy and paste it into another picture. Uh, well, that's because you're a, you're a pet photographer, so you know, the, you know how to talk to Fifi. I do, and oh, if you do want to photograph pets, if you want to control most dogs, basically either bring up... Uh, the sound of a squeaky toy uh, yep. on YouTube or oh, on, on your phone attention. or get a squeaky toy because mm -hmm. you can essentially control a dog with a, many dogs with a squeaky toy and treats also work well. Like you hold the treat uh, and uh, above the lens, for example, and the dog will often look right at you. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm actually writing this down to share with my friends. <laughs> it's sweet. Yes. We jump in that. All right. We've got about, oh, four and a half minutes left. I would love to have you. We've already mentioned it earlier, Andrew, but let's kiss on videos a little bit. Oh, sure. See, video is so powerful, and people really relate to it. And in the past, I mean, not that many years ago, we couldn't even watch videos. It would stutter. Like, it would, we'd have all kinds of issues because of internet connectivity. But now, it's not that way. So if you use video often, you'll be going to the top of a lot of the different um, search engines and social media channels because people connect with it. So let's start with lighting. It's almost identical to the lighting 
uh, mm-hmm. tips that I talked about before, mm-hmm. whether it's window lighting or the lighting using the Medusa lamp. Well, just and, I, by the way, let me just add into this. I, I went online looking at things um, during the commercial break. I found the cheapest one at Target. The cheapest one under $20 with five different um, Medusas going out. Mm-hmm. And, and Lowell's, Lowell's then was 29 39 to Home Depot. Amazon was the most expensive. So there you go. There's my tip. <laughs> That's great. And the other things with video is People do not like shaky video. Uh, so you can either use a, a tripod. Uh, mm-hmm. Selfie sticks generally are not good for video. Mm-hmm. If you have to, you can. Mm-hmm. But generally, you want someone with uh, steady hands. Mm-hmm. Or you can use some of these products that are out there from like D- DJI, like the Osmo, and they will actually help to steady it for you. But just keep in mind, try not to create shaky video. And the other thing is the audio. People generally will accept lower quality video, but low quality audio is not something that people will uh, stay around for for very long. So there's a few ways to deal with that. You can often plug in an external microphone into your phone and then put a lavalier mic on, on you, and that is outstanding. There's other options, which I won't, Actually, I'll add it to the special page where you can actually use a Bluetooth headset and you can connect it to an app on your phone and you can wirelessly use the Bluetooth headset as a microphone, which is incredible. And the, so the quality goes up, plus it's wireless. Well, also that you can get, a, you know, a, 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 not directly to your phone or even you can get some really decent stuff and plug it right into the phone and really bump up the quality. Oh yes, absolutely. So just look, make sure it applies. Yeah, make sure it's it's specifically for your phone because the the issue with audio with all these different smartphones is a very tricky one. Tricky one. And the other tip is to to do it inside, obviously. Um, yes. But outside is just so nice sometimes. And well, sometimes you know, if it's quiet, if you've got quiet. And you've got, I mean, I did a video at a conference and actually I can hear the noise, but I'm so clear and loud. It's just fine. You know, I'm talking about speaking. All right, Andrew, we have a minute. So let's come back and talk about you. Um, and just remind everyone, your website is focusandandfilter.com. To get his special tip page, just focusandfilter.com forward slash author. And the name of your book again is, share it. Focus and Filter, and that particular book I wrote because, I mean, I was invited to write it. I was fortunate, but when I finally, after I, I got the invitation to write it, I really poured my heart into sharing tips from like 25 years of being out there and taking pictures so that anyone can just read through some of these 50 tips and immediately make better pictures and get their camera, especially these more advanced cameras, off of the auto mode. All right. I go into a lot of things. All right, so everyone, happy publishing. And Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week.